back again. It is the incredible rhyme animal, the uncannibal. All right, so it's a quarter after nine in the morning. Park opened up at nine o'clock. Early entry today was Islands of Adventure at eight o'clock. Thought about it a bit and I thought this might be the better time to arrive instead of just immediately at rope drop where everybody is rushing to get in. Getting here a little bit after the park opens may allow for a little bit of the congestion to get through the turnstiles. The Mummy will probably reopen today. It was open for team members yesterday. Although I'm not here to ride the Mummy. I'm here to do a lap or two and see all the Horror Nights updates goodness. All right, so most of the crowd to get in has dissipated. I've pretty much just walked right in here. Coming up into Nettlewood Cemetery. It's been built out a little bit. The Undeadly Rest Scare Zone, if you will. Look at this. Branches and webs, candles, and some plants. Look at that. Coins. Some more like mossy stuff. Speakers are camouflaged. Ah, grass and speakers and fog machines. Do not climb and do not climb. And you can see they've put these gates in here, right in those brackets that I thought maybe they would be connecting something soon. Shaggy's over here. Oh my goodness. Uh-oh. There's a wreath, but I don't think they're celebrating Christmas. A statue. Lots of places for actors to hide now. Got a little web curtain area here, so you won't be able to see in there when it's dark. And the Black Reef, it's the name of my band. Gargoyles. More fog machines and speakers. Boo holes and spooky lights. Another statue just hiding here. It would be cool if the scare actors are dressed like those statues. Some flowers for the recently deceased. Oh, some prayer beads. Oh my, it's been a long night. Get this woman some delicioso. There's one particular light just shining right there. We head up through Central Park into the Scarecrow Scare Zone. This framework in place so that they can have a fully enclosed barn area here. And in multiple levels, so scarecrows or scare actors can be up above or in there. Speakers up there, speakers down there. Ladders to get up. And speakers in the cursed soil. And I'm walking out by Animal Actors. They've got food boots up here now. No menu items noted as of yet. We'll probably get those this week. I think we've seen these castle designs before. And here's another one over here as well. We can see some lights up here already. More lights here in the distance. We should have three roaming hordes this year. And this food house over here themed to the good guys and Chucky. Will one of the roaming hordes be toys or Chucky himself? Who knows? Springfield, pretty empty back here right now. Duffman says, 18 more days until Horror Nights. Another bar, food area, right opposite where the Bugs house, I believe is supposed to be here. Bugs eaten alive. And from what I understand, it's supposed to take place in like the 1950s, which really reminds me of the later versions of Motel Hell at Hollow Scream in Tampa. King of Pop, yo. Make me wanna scream. This year's Nightmare Fuel. Still under construction. You can see all of the trusses and lighting set up there. I believe this year's edition is called Wildfire. More bar tents. More food tents. Look at this giant pumpkin. This looks like it would be really fun to build. Heading into London, there are some lights here. I think those lights are just for a pathway, but there could be a roaming horde here. Somebody, anybody, save that chef. More lights, heading into San Francisco. 
previously said this would be a witch scare zone, and I think it would be code word Coven. I think the likely name now is Conjure the Dark. We've got some lights up here. And a witchy stage. What does it mean? Look at these runes. Do the runes mean anything? Got steps for the actors to get up there. More drink tents. And heading into this area outside of Transformers, I think this will also likely be another roaming horde zone. But turning around right back to New York, you got Louis Scare Actor Dining taking place there. And then we'll head into New York for some sweet revenge. I love it. Love it. We have another little bar area back here in Sting Alley. This bar food area here. Delicious. Look at all of this gloriousness. Coming out of Sting Alley and looking back at the Paris Theater. My theater. Sidewalk here in New York is still under construction. Mummy was open yesterday for team members. And here we go. More Horror Nights goodness. The Halloween parade has been ruined. Fog machine. Look at the tire is completely busted open down there. Do not climb. Of course, this is brought to you by Major Sweets Candy Company. And the Festival Parade is a proud sponsor of Major Sweets Candy Company. And it's the Major Sweets Candy Company truck. Little Boo, I spy you. They've added some bunting and decorations here to this stand. And it's the judge's booth. Major Sweets. Orange lights in the tree. All of the trees. This truck has had an extraordinarily long life here at Horror Nights also. It's been used many, many, many years. Look at the license plate. And that detail. Oh, it expires on 1331. And it's got killer taste. Monsters outside of Monsters Cafe still spinning. Monsters Cafe itself. Still being destroyed. And outside construction for the new Minions ride. We'll head into the horrors of Halloween. Kind of traditional Halloween scare zone for the year. Usual like pumpkins that we normally see in Central Park, but now up on all these lighting trusses. Truss, trusses? Can't trust no one? It looks to me like some of these guys are reused, but I don't know for sure. I know a bunch of people online were asking if you could see Little Boo here. Little Boo, not in the Little Pumpkins, I believe. But what should be in these jack-o'-lanterns is the classic John Carpenter's Halloween jack-o'-lantern from the beginning of the movie, a little intro crawl. Probably one of the most famous horror pumpkins or jack-o'-lanterns of all time. I would think it should be significantly represented, especially since that is basically their title IP house for the year. The adventure begins again. Seuss on the loose, Seuss on the loose. <laughs> Let's stop off at the All Hallows Eve Boutique. Boutique. Oh, all the Chucky stuff. I wonder why. Harnet signs, cups, ornaments, hats. Ooh, a sublimated headband. Buttons, light up bracelets, and beanies. I got the beanie last week. Heavy flannel shirt, shot glasses, more ornaments, kind of like juice or jelly glasses. Wait, that design on it. Oh, there's a good Casper the Ghost on there. What the heck? Lounge flight esque bag, but not lounge fly. Hard Nights hat. Lanyards. And your pass holder. And then look at that shirt. Busy. It also has Casper on it. Oh, look at this. Hey, there's a National Frankenstein Day. Little boot pants. Headbands. Oh, look at this shirt. I like the Day of the Dead. 
Hero Cat still doing his thing. Ooh. Here's a look at all of the Halloween Horror Nights ornaments that they have left here. They also have these different HHN pass holders. Look at that. Alright, got Mary's shirt, got pass holders for the two of us. Complete our lap to go through Hogsmeade, Cinderella Castle. Ooh, the dinosaur flames are out. Uh oh, one side. Little Wolverine. Alright, Universal, it's time to get out of here. Alright, so spent two hours making a couple laps. Totally drenched again at this point. One thing is for sure, Horror Nights is gonna be steep and hot and probably loaded with rain at some point, so prepare accordingly. So in another couple days, Universal should announce all of the remaining things. Shows, zones, the remaining ground up IP houses again. Don't expect anything like Stranger Things or some other random IP that might be thrown in. That's not happening. But you will get the correct names of all of the houses and zones and the show. Unlike what's on the spec map, spec map always spec map is always close. The HHN, you know, Halloween Horror Night Nightmares guys, it's a tongue twister. They're always awesome, but they always leave you just a little bit of wiggle room. And we're just over two weeks away from the start of Horror Nights team member previews, uh, happening the Wednesday before Horror Nights, and then Horror Nights opening the Friday of Labor Day weekend. So we get the benefit of having three nights this year: Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Last year we just had Friday and Saturday, and that extra day to recover if you have off for Labor Day. I did spend the day yesterday just watching TV and vegging out on the couch, etc. And I ended up watching Freaky, which is half of the Blumhouse house this year. So you have Freaky and the Black Phone. Black Phone I've seen uh, a couple of times, once in the movies, once at home. Excellent movie. I really love that movie. Freaky, I really did not like that movie at all. It's supposed to be a horror comedy, and I didn't think that it was a horror or necessarily a comedy. I actually cringed through most of the movie and felt genuinely sorry for Vince Vaughn. I just wonder if he was desperate for a paycheck and needed some money to do that movie. So I'm very much hoping that that house is like 90% black phone and like 10% uh, freaky. But in any event, here we go. We're off to the final countdown for Horror Nights. In the meantime of waiting for announcements here, uh, Hollow Scream and Bush Gardens kind of knocking out of the park and they've had announcement after announcement lately. The folks up at Netherworld have announced their themes for the year. 13th Floor sent out coupons for cheaper admission for the event or for their event so the hills are alive with the sounds of halloween and on that note we're getting out of here thanks a lot for coming along thank you very much for all of your likes comments and subscriptions treat others the way you want to be treated have a great night and day we'll see you guys joan jets carry zone confirmed subscribe to the cheap seats or he's gonna kill me